Alright, hello everyone, Simon here. Welcome back to our Minecraft Trains project. At the end of the last video, actually no, it was that in the stream, I think, I was uh, having fun checking out all the uh, stuff that Wesley still had to do on this branch. <laughs> Look how long this branch is. Maybe I should help him out or something. Hi Wesley, welcome back. Hey, look how much work there is still to do on this branch. <laughs> Maybe I'll come help you out or something. How about... Uh... Hmm. I was thinking maybe like you build one one side of the track and I'll build the other. Hey, there's a floating island here, did you know that? Oh, it's not floating. It's kind of stuck to the ground over there. Um... Let's see, I can pave the other branches. Or I can, like, help clean up some of this. Which... If you want to, like, maybe you can do one side and I'll do the other. Like, like this stuff. Like, one side is missing, right? Well, I can just go pave the other stuff too, like it doesn't, uh... We're gonna have to pave that stuff anyway, eventually. Yeah, so if you want, like, do one side and I'll do the other. But you still have to lay out... You still have to figure out where the track actually goes. Down to here, two, three, four, and five. And then these trees need to go. How are you, Wesley? Uh, had a good week? is good. So we get to here... Right. I suppose been helping Helena with the jewelry design? Oh, this is like the, the final... final thing for what? For the semester? Or... Final of the year, right. So what... <laughs> There'll be like, presentation stuff, right? It'll be like, uh... Coloring in. <laughs> I shouldn't... I shouldn't call it coloring in. <laughs> what do you... So what kind of stuff would you do? I mean, you shouldn't do the design work, right? Because that would be cheating. A big marquette, I hope they're similar in English. Yeah, so it's basically just a big board with the presentation stuff on it. Right? Or is it a model? Are you talking about a model or a big board? Hey, model making is fun. Except when you're like, under time pressure. <laughs> When you're not under time pressure, model making is fun. The model, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> what do you what do you make it out of? Man, model making these days is uh is different from when I did it back in school. Like uh laser cutting was a new thing when I was back in school. But these days you just like have a machine cut everything for you. A weird white cardboard foam kind of deal. Oh that stuff. You guys still use that? 
It's uh, it's not very environmentally friendly. We still cut everything manual. Oh man, you guys need to invest in some technologies. <laughs> Get a laser cutter. I mean, basically have a robot do all the work for you, Wesley, is what you need to do. <laughs> Let the machines take over. Yeah, so back when I did it, we were still cutting things manually. Now the kids, the kids these days, have uh, laser cutters. And you just, like, you just feed a drawing into the computer and you stick the thing onto a plate and then the laser just cuts through everything. Laser cutter CNC machines. Uh, CNC co computer numeric construct. Uh, let me just figure out this uh, CNC. What is the numerical control? Computer numerical control, which is a, a, a terrible acronym. Basically, it's a it's a. Now get out of here! What are we doing? It's basically a a lathe. That is controlled by a computer, and it just mills the wood. Or well, 3D printing. Hey, d have you guys uh, done 3D printing, Wesley? Have you tried it out? 3D. You've used CNCs in school. Yeah, CNCs. Uh, 3D printing is, is the new stuff, and um, laser cutters. I've been interested in 3D printing. You have a friend with a 3D printer, but we don't use any for the model. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm interested in 3D printing, but it's also difficult to justify buying a 3D printer because there's not that much stuff that I want to do with it. <laughs> so we've, like, in in all the years that I've been thinking about it, I've gotten one thing 3D printed. <laughs> and that was really good because like it was a we have a shed in the back garden and the uh, one of the hinges on the doors broke or one of the, like the one of the uh, rail things on the door broke. And because it's like a cheap shed that nobody uses anymore. <laughs> there were no replacement parts, right? And so my dad like spent years. <laughs> My dad, being the, the stubborn man he is, like spent years looking for a replacement part. <laughs> and eventually, I'm like, hey, why don't why don't we just get this thing printed? Like, it's 3D printed. <laughs> so I I took the part and I drew it up. It's like this little little thing, a little plastic thing that I drew it up. And we uh, and I got it ordered from Shapeways. Shapeways is a is a 3D printing company based in the U.S. But they've got pretty good printers. And and they do like a they basically deliver it to you. They print it for you and deliver it for you. And so we got a little little shed slider thing printed, and it works perfectly because it's just uh, custom made to order. And that's the only thing that I've ever gotten three D printed in my whole life. <laughs> and I've never come across another reason for needing to use 3D printers. So it's it's like it's super useful in those circumstances where it is useful. But my experience is that they're so rare that uh, I can't justify buying my own printer. Although I guess if you're a... Uh, it's, I mean, it's kind of niche, except where it's not. Like if you're a... If you're a design school, yeah, like if you're in architecture school, then maybe all your architecture kids would love a 3D printer because then you can make custom things. Uh, this thing, this here is a little bit strange. Like it goes down for like five points and up again. I feel like we should just like flatten this out and have it a little less strange. Just a personal preference. Yeah, so if you're if you're in art school or if you're uh, in architecture school. 
then it, it 100% makes sense to have a 3D printer. I guess it's a scale thing, right? So me personally, I've I've used it once, but I imagine if like if every village has one, it makes sense. Like if every every thousand people you have one 3D printer, maybe that makes sense. Like one person alone won't have that much use for it. But it would be nice if like you know in in a in a neighborhood or in the community there's a 3D printer service. So Helena is still making models by hand, huh? Oh, what year is she? Did I ask? Like, how many years is the architecture course there, and what year is she? Like, if you don't mind me asking. I mean, it's also possible that they save the the laser cutter for the for the uh, the higher levels. Because everybody wants to use it otherwise. <laughs> She's done her third year now, so she gets a bachelor now and then two years from a year, okay. So she's uh, through the bachelor's, right. And 3D printing is not just... It's not just a, a curiosity, because if you get into an architecture firm, knowing how to use 3D printers is pretty useful, especially like in the future. Uh, rapid prototyping technologies is, uh, is pretty useful. I mean, if I were <laughs> the kind of person who would actually work <laughs> seriously and get a job, I suppose I could like... Uh, Specialize in rapid prototyping, and I can like run the 3D printer for a firm or something. Kind of interested in that stuff. Still making models by hand, huh? I wonder how useful it would be though. Well, it would be... It's just like, it's just, it's just time and hours, because look, if you are making models by hand, because you have to make the design on computer anyway, yeah, but no, but it's it's faster. <laughs> well, it's sometimes it's useful to like have a thing in real life, like a, a computer model isn't always perfect. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you're right, you do have to make the computer model anyway. But the thing is if you have a three D printer you can make the make the model out of the three D printer immediately. And if you get into like really complex shapes and things, sometimes it's not easy to visualize. Especially for people who aren't trained. So uh like, a lot of presentation stuff, you have to present the things in a way that people can understand. And so presentation stuff, you often have to make models. Like you don't have to make it for yourself, and you don't have to do it for the engineer. But for the clients, like for city councils, when you're trying to get like uh, permission to build stuff from the council, for example. I mean, those guys don't necessarily know how to read the drawings. Or like if you have to, uh, I don't know if, if this is a thing where you are, but in New Zealand there's like building consents, and so if you want to build something that is a little bit controversial, uh, you need to get permission from your neighbors and things. Right, so you have to get a consent to build the stuff. And so then you have to present the design to people who, who don't really know anything about architecture. And you need to show them what it looks like. And so in situations like that, obviously, you need to make models and 
and renders and things. Not fam not that familiar with how it is here. <laughs> I mean, building code. So, if we have a building code, right? So, there's there's laws that state what you're allowed to build and what you're not allowed to build. And and there are some things where you can build if your neighbors say it's okay, <laughs> because like like it technically it is not like it's not allowed by default. But if your neighbors say it's fine, then it's fine. Hey, maybe we should lower this by one block because it's pretty long. I'll, I'll do it, Wesley, I'll do it. Like, uh... From here, we'll lower it by one block. Alright, going up to there. I guess engineering is is where the rapid prototyping is more useful. Like if you're actually trying to design machines and tools and things. But even in architecture, sometimes you um maybe you have like a complicated joint or something. Like you have a number of beams and columns coming together in a weird angle. Then maybe you want to prototype that to make sure that the, the parts can fit together in a way that makes sense. Alright, so this is the uh, the track. So now we need to pave everything. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna... Should I leave you here? I'll go to the other branches and pave the other branches. This is a long track, wow. Oh, well, I was also saying that, um, like, ultimately, it's about cost, right? So if if you need to make a model, how many hours does it take for you to make the model? Basically, do you hire a person? <laughs> do you hire a professional model maker? Or do you have a robot do it for you? And, and usually, the robot will do it faster. And so then it's just... Uh, just means you save money having a robot make the model. Three D printing, I guess, like curves, like complex curves, like a uh, what? What are they called? Like a uh, I forgot what they're called, but things that curve in multiple directions at the same time. <laughs> so like uh, complex curved surfaces, right, is, is, is difficult to make by hand. Or like really intricate things. Like for example, if you want like a lattice, like a screen with a pattern in it, then that is, is, is really hard to cut that by hand where you, if you have a a laser cutter, then the computer can just cut it for you much more easily than you can cut it yourself. Which I'm interested in screens with patterns on it, actually. Uh, remember Canopy Station? Like imagine glass with patterns etched into it and then like layers layers of glass with different patterns etched into it and then the the shadows that that would create that's interesting <laughs> and so that's that's the kind of thing that like, you don't want to do that by hand <laughs> it's not the, you don't want to be cutting clear sheets of plastic by hand in in complicated patterns <laughs> I was cutting small strips of wood for railings, yeah, like even, no, even railings, for example. I feel like, uh, yeah, that, and that's, you're right, it is tedious. And imagine if you had a laser cutter that just made all the railings for you. 